double jeopardy argument that you're being punished so severely by uh, paying uh, eighty dollars because it's a hundred percent penalty if they catch you with cotton and you haven't got your receipt and they bust you within the forty eight hours of receipt for your dope at forty bucks a gram mm -hmm. then they hit you for eighty bucks a gram. Now, that that's mm -hmm. like twelve hundred bucks an ounce or something. I mean it gets pretty damn expensive. And uh, if you're supposed to do that every two days it kind of encourages drug use. But uh, they've reduced the amount you owe on your marijuana uh, to $3 a gram so that they can uh, prosecute you and go after you and your house and property for your tax lien they put against you when they bust you. So we do have a tax law in effect. Now let's say you're growing pot in Indiana right now. Um, you're supposed to pull out the damn plants and weigh them and tell them how much you got and go give them a receipt. Now it doesn't work too well probably pulling out those plants every 48 hours, but they don't <coughs> seem to care about that. <laughs> and anyway, I don't know anybody that goes and pays taxes on, on their dough. But uh, that's what you're supposed to do. That's one of the laws in effect right now, today, in Indiana uh, on marijuana and other controlled substances. Let's go beyond first offense possession or cultivation or delivery. It doesn't matter anymore whether you're dealing. It used to be a big difference between possession of an ounce and dealing it was like 2 to 10 and 5 to 20. But now it's the same penalty whether you grow it, sell it, or deal it. No difference in the law than the penalty you get. So what are they saying there? Not even in pretending to get a dealer more than a possessor of marijuana under statutes in Indiana. They don't even claim that they're going after dealers uh, because it's the same penalty uh, whether you grow it or possess it or you deliver it to somebody even without profit is is uh, all the same. So let's say you have a second offense misdemeanor. You possessed a joint 20 years ago and you got a misdemeanor conviction, and now 20 years later you got another joint 20 years later. Well, there's no time limit on marijuana, interestingly enough, to enhance that to a felony. To be a drunk driving enhancement, for example, they can only go back five years for a prior conviction to enhance it to a felony for drunk driving in the state. Marijuana, there's no limit. So they can go back 20 years and make it a felony for a joint or a seed 20 years later, which seems a little unreasonable to me, too, and unfair. Uh, but nevertheless, I. They, uh, they didn't let me help draft these laws, although I, I would have liked to. Um, so now what we have is a second offense or a first offense involving growing, cultivation, and possession of over 30 grams. They raised it from 25 to 30, for God's sakes. At least you get an ounce in the, under the, the, the limit. But uh, uh, you'd be surprised how many times they'll overweight, uh, overweight the quantity for whatever reason. But, um, so now we have a, a, a first offense over uh, 30 grams of marijuana, or it's your second offense, no time limit again, and now you're facing a D felony, and that's up to three years in prison, not jail, and a $10,000 fine. Also, you can get a $5,000 fine on this first offense misdemeanor, $5,000, in addition to the taxes, in addition to the whatever cost are associated with defending yourself in a marijuana case, bonds and everything else. Uh, there's a presumptive 18 months in prison. They presume you're going to go to prison for a year and a half. And you can maybe get it down to six months, and you maybe can get it suspended. And in some situations, you can get a misdemeanor if you've got a good lawyer and it works out right on, on a second offense or a first offense involving over 30 grams. And then the next break and the last break in Indiana law on marijuana is 10 pounds. If you have 10 pounds or more, I think that is what it says, they can charge you with... Uh, it's automatically dealing now, now it's dealing. <clears throat> because if you have 10 pounds, you're a dealer and they won't hear anything but that. So they call it dealing even if you're just possessing it or you're growing it for your own use or you're actually dealing it. And that's a seed felony. And that's up to uh, eight years in prison and a $10,000 fine. Now with all of these, they'll take your license. Mandatory. Now, if you get a drunk driving case, the judge can give your license back to drive to and from work for six months because typically as a condition of probation on a drunk driving case, you got to work, support your dependents, you got to pay court costs, countermeasures fee, <laughs> probation fees, uh, maybe piss in a bottle fees, and all this stuff. But they give you your license back to drive, to, to visit your kids and go to the probation office. But if you get a marijuana case, they don't give you, you can't get a probationary license from the judge. you got to sue the state of Indiana in a separate lawsuit for hardship license. That's a joint compared to drunk driving. Drunk drivers, we give them their license back. If you've got a joint in your pocket walking down the street, you don't. Uh, it's amazing to me. It never ceases to amaze me. Uh, but that's the laws in Indiana right now. They're totally outrageous. And there's no statute that now says, and if you have a prescription from your doctor, it's a defense. They've taken that out. 
So how long? It's a felony. Well, go ahead. How long is the license suspension? On Six the months. Plastic? And the car now. Your wife can't even drive you to your probation meeting or you to your work in the family car because the car's busted too. It's actually a minimum six months. The minimum two years. Can be two. Thank you. Okay. The minimum is six months. That's usually. I've never seen anybody get more than six months. Have you? Yeah. Regularly a year. Yeah, I've seen it a year, kind of think that I have. Yes, you're right. I didn't even know they went to two. <laughs> Worse than I thought. <laughs> Worse than I thought. But you see how unfair this is? But lawyers don't, I mean, the lawyers I talk to, they don't give a shit. I, I, I don't know. It's just amazing to me. It's just so unfair. And they bust the car, too. So here's somebody who's, who chooses not to drink alcohol because it's a violent, nasty thing, and it leads to bad behavior, and, you know, bad things can happen when you're drunk and, and uh, you could hurt people driving and all these other things so they, they don't drink and decide to smoke pot and for some reason they get busted that a kid turns them in or whatever it is uh, they're going to lose their license and the car's busted and how are they going to work how are they going to pay the probation fees how are they going to drive to go piss in a bottle and pay twenty dollars for the privilege uh, how are they going to do it if they don't even have a car to use to go and they can't drive and how are they going to support their families and pay these court costs how stupid is this and it has nothing to do with driving I mean, the marijuana, I mean, you lose your license automatically for a marijuana case, whether you are driving a car, whether you, I mean, yeah, it's not that you were driving while intoxicated no. on There's marijuana, no it's, if, if, it's if you possess it in your house, if you have it in your pocket, if anywhere, you lose your driver's license, whether driving had anything to do with your case or not, which is different than drunk driving. Let me give you an example of what Ross is talking about. Let's say you were driving down this street with some loud speaker on your car <laughs> in a gravel truck and the gravel's flying out and people are getting out of the way and the guy's drunk and he's driving up on the sidewalk and he's you know and he's a real hazard but it's his first offense he goes to court and he gets his license back to drive to and from work and his car's not busted and they don't the place and registration are busted but if you're walking down the sidewalk and you're not even driving you got a joint in your pocket you 